Good morning, good morning, everyone. We're running a minute or two behind here. Sorry about that. One of those mornings at my house. All righty. Just hang on for a minute. We'll see if anybody jumps on here. It is Tuesday and it is 10, and that means it's time for Tuesdays at 10 with Nana. That's me. We're going to do a fun art lesson in just a few minutes. We are going to learn how to draw this cool 3D art. Last week I did it as part of our spinner toy. This week you're going to do it in, well, I'm going to do it in my art journal. And you can do it on any piece of paper that you would like. You can do it in a circle. You can do it in a rectangle. You can do it in a square, however you want it to be. Hang on one second. Let me just get this going here. All right, hold on, hold on in. Let me get it ready. I got my little helper here. Trying to get this going. Why is it not working? I don't know. Trying to figure out how we can do this. All right. I'm not sure. Any? Let's just hold on a minute and see if we can figure it out in a minute. Okay. No. You do. Okay. You go ahead and do it then. Right here. Before I start that art project, I thought I'd show you a couple pieces that I've done recently. Some of you may have seen the black and white fish that I did little Zen Doodles designs in. Well, I painted it with watercolor and then I decided it needed some shine. So I'm going to tilt it and you might see a glare. There is lots of glitter on this picture. There's a white iridescent shimmer on the bubbles and there's a multicolored like holographic iridescent glitter on different parts of the fish. It was super fun to do. Zen doodling is one of my favorite pastimes. I think we're going to learn a little bit about Zen doodle. Yours doesn't have to be this complicated, but you can Zen doodle any design that you'd like. All right. One more little project I'd like to show you. As you know, every week we offer art kits to go. They are $15 for one, two for 28. If you get five or more for a birthday party, for Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, whatever group, VBS, um, if it's five or more kits of the same design, you can get them for $12 each. They include everything you need to do a masterpiece. And if you have a group, I'd be more than happy to do a Zoom with you or to do a little video tutorial. All righty, no honey, don't do that. All right, one of the art kits today that I don't think we featured yet is our Fun Owl. Look at that cutie pie. This one is done on an 8x10 canvas, which is exactly what you get in your kit. On this one, I added some flowers, which we could learn how to do, or you don't have to put the flowers. You could put buttons down the front. You could put anything you want. Around the edges, it's a funky looking design. I was learning how to use a palette knife. Something else you can do or you can leave off. But this fun owl design is available in one of our kits. All right, let's get to it. I'm going to take my art journal, a blank page. This art journal is about, let me measure this because I forget. It is, let me turn my camera down so you can see what we are doing here. Don't mind the mess on the table. An art studio is a creative space and creative spaces need lots of creative materials. So that's why you will see lots of different things there. Let's see if it can turn this way. Let's see if that's better. Okay, I'm going to attempt to match this camera up with our angle. Not sure, I guess it's better this way after all. How does that look? You see it? You'll see it in a minute. Okay, this art journal is about 10 inches tall and it is about the paper part is about seven. So it's about 10 by seven, which is a pretty good size. It's not super small, not super big. The little piece that I showed you was only about four inches by four. So you can see I have a much larger surface. It's almost too big. So what I'm gonna do is make it a little bit smaller. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna draw myself a rectangle like this. Notice I don't worry about it using the ruler for this. It does not matter if it's perfect or not. It can be any shape you want. 
this table is kind of shaky, so be really careful. Try not to move it. Let me see this for a minute. Give me just a minute and we'll see if we can pull this up on the iPad. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm not sure what is going on here. Page, maybe that's what it was. We didn't have it on the page. Give me just a minute. If it's not showing up, we may have to switch posts. You know, Nana and technology, guys, not my favorite thing. Alrighty, let's see. I cannot figure, there we go, there's a comment. Ah, got it. I think we've actually got it. Let's get the sound off. And wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, you should be able to see them. Comments on when we pull them up. All right, who had something to say? Who's with us this morning? Someone, uh, Angela really likes the lizard. Oh, Angela, thank you for jumping on, and I'm glad you like that lizard. That is one of the many designs available for our, our kits. This morning, we're going to create this little 3D project, and I apologize. We're having a little technical difficulty, as usual. This is not a hard project. The first thing you need to do is you need to just use your pencil. Draw. 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 Yes, I know, Amy. I'm going to use my pencil, and I'm going to just with my eyes, trying to figure out about where the middle is. I'm gonna look this way and find the center. It's about here. It does not have to be exact. I suggest that you use your pencil to draw these lines that are coming. I'm gonna use my marker so that you can see it better, okay? So I'm just gonna take my marker, touch it to the center and draw a line out to the outer edge of my rectangle. It does not matter where on the rectangle you draw it. You just want it to go to the rectangle. I'm gonna come over here and draw another one. And another one, always from the center. I need a total of 10 lines, no matter how big or small it is, no matter whether you have a big circle or square or rectangle, you need 10 lines. Be very careful to count 10. They do not have to be exactly spaced. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As you can see, some of the little sections of my design are larger than others, and that's perfectly fine. Hang on, let me just turn this little light on, see if I can get it to show up a little better. Does that make a difference? Yes. All right, you let me know if anybody says anything, okay? All right, once you have these 10 lines, and I'll give you just a minute to do that. Remember, it just needs to go from the middle of your page or the approximate middle out to the edge. 10 different lines. <clears throat> In a few minutes, you'll see why it's important to know that it's 10. All righty, what we're going to do now is we're gonna make a series of small lines um, grab me a piece of white paper over there, please. We're going to make some, some little shapes, and some of them are going to look like a U without the stick. Just a U like this, or a little bit wider like that. And then some other ones are going to be the upside down U, which it's is an like... An without the stick. Or almost an N without the stick, okay? Those are the only two shapes you need. We're gonna start with the ones that I'm calling a U. I'm gonna choose any one of these sections and I'm gonna start with this one in the corner. Doesn't matter which one you start with. About maybe a thumbnail away from the middle. Doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna draw a U. I'm gonna start at the line, swoop down and come up to the other line. You see that? Then I'm gonna go up about another thumbnail and I'm gonna make another U. It's not really a U, but we're gonna call it that. I'm gonna come up here and make another one. And then because this is a really big space at the top, I'm gonna to make a sort of part of one up there, okay? Yours does not have to be that exact number. You don't wanna make them too close together. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice this morning, but you don't want them too far apart either. 
Okay. Everybody got that? It's okay if you do it with a pencil first and then trace over it. Or you can just go ahead and do it with your black marker. Either one is fine. Remember how we did 10 lines? Those 10 lines divided my rectangle into 10 sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. What I'm gonna do is every other section is gonna have the same shape of the curved line. So this one I did use, skip this one, skip, skip. I'm gonna go to this one and make use. Do you see that? Use, no use. Use, what's gonna go here? No use. Next one, use. Are you starting to see the pattern here? You, no you, you, no you, you, no you. That means this one needs use. Now I'm not gonna turn my paper because it will be a little harder for you to see, but it's not really looking like a U from where I'm sitting. That doesn't matter. You just wanna continue the shapes. They swoop down towards the center of the design. See that? They curve down towards the middle of my page. No matter what direction they're coming from, that all the lines are curving down towards it. I have one more to do, not this one, but this one. All right. My little U curvy lines, just like that. That wasn't too hard, was it? Just make sure that you skip a section in between each one. That's really important. So how is everybody today? Is it hot where you are here in South Carolina? I think it's gonna be 100 degrees today. So we're hoping to take a dip in the pool later on. We have a few other things going on, but that's on our list, hopefully to cool down a little bit. It's so hot, nobody really wants to be outside for long unless you're near the water. All righty. Which the water's probably hot too. The water is probably warm. Sometimes it kind of feels like stepping into a bathtub. But then at least when you get out and you're wet, it feels cooler than when you got there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we now have one, two, three, four, five sections with what I called my funny use. What do you think we're going to do in the rest of the sections? Not these. That's right. We're going to do the upside down use or the ends, whatever you want to call them. So let's choose any one section that's not been drawn in. We're going to start with this one. And this time it's a little bit trickier. I want to find the end of one of my U's and the end of the one on this side. And I'm going to do a curved line that kind of joins them. You see that? Come up here to the next one. Curved line. I just did that wrong. Whoops. I sure did. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, it's supposed to go this way, this way, this way. Nothing like messing up right here on live. That's okay. We're just going to keep on going. And I did not use pencil, so I'm going to need to paint over that real quick. To cover it up so that it won't look like that. This is a little trick you can use if this happens to you. All right, I don't want to confuse you to pieces, so let me just cover that up real quick because I can't erase marker. All right, hopefully that'll cover it just enough so that you can see the correct lines. Okay, in the next section, what we want to do is join the lines in this one to the lines in this one with the opposite angle or the opposite curve. So from this end towards me, and there, you see that? <coughs> it kind of makes the whole thing look like a curvy line, doesn't it? Okay, now on this end one, I kind of ran out of room, but that's okay. It can just run off onto the end of the page like that, no problem. All right, let's come to this one. And I'm gonna always start at the one closest to the center because it's a little bit easier to see. I'm gonna go up and over. Curve up and over, curve up and over. That was a big curve. 
And then this section, curve up and over. Once you've done a couple of sections, it's a little bit easier to know how to do it. It's just that first one really messed me up. When you're doing art and you make a mistake, don't get upset. Just figure out a way to fix it. It'll work. All right, how crazy looking is that? Doesn't look like very much 3D yet, does it? Does this one look like this one? Not yet, but you might start to see those little lines curving in and out. But how do we turn this into this? That is the question. Give you just a couple minutes to catch up while I grab a drink of water. If you're watching this live, please drop a comment and let me know you're here. Share it with a friend or a family member. If you're not able to watch it live, and you'll see the red box up at the top if it is. If you're not watching it live, you're watching it on replay, just drop a little comment that says replay. Don't forget, every Tuesday at 10, we do a little art project free for you guys. Kids of all ages, grown-ups can join in too. And anytime you participate and do the project, whether it's live or on replay, I would really, really love to see what you have created. I'd love to see yours. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be magical. Well, that's not quite true. They're all magical. I'd love you to drop a photo of you doing your art or just of your completed art, art piece. At the end of the month, we're going to draw a name of someone who has left a, or posted a picture or sent me a picture of you doing your artwork or your finished artwork. And that person is going to win a free art kit of their choice. Woohoo! That'll be lots of fun. That's at the end of the month. Okay, back to our design. What in the world are we going to do with this? Okay, remember how we drew the 10 lines that made 10 different sections, okay? I'm going to start with this one where I messed up to get those lines out of the way. And what I'm going to do is closest to the center, I'm going to use my black Sharpie on this and I'm going to color in the first piece in this section. That means from the very center point out to the first curvy line is all going to be black. Now I'm going over some paint that may or may not be quite dry, so yours will probably look better than this. There we go. All right. It's kind of like a piece of pizza on this one, isn't it? A little tiny piece of pizza. Does everybody see that? The next section is not going to be black. So I'm going to need to cover that mistake up a little bit better. Let's see if I can do it one more time. I wish I had some uh, stuff that you use in the office to cover up stuff. That would be helpful. White out. Well, I don't think I have any white out right now. Well, in this, in this office, we just use paint. That's true. We just paint over it. When you make a mistake or you don't really like something, just do something else over it. If you don't like the way a design is, you can add another color. You can add glitter. You can add a design. Do all kinds of things. Okay. We're going to skip the next section of this little slice of pizza. And we're going to cut, we're going to color this one with the black marker. Okay. This black marker got a little paint on it. So we're going to switch. There we go. Color this next section in black. Now you do want to try your best to stay in the lines on this part. It will make your overall design look really cool. Sometimes it's easier if you go ahead and color next to the edges a little bit first and then color in the middle. Does anybody do that? There we go. Okay, in this one piece I now have two sections of black and two sections of white. The end one is very small, but it's still there. All right. I'm going to skip this whole slice of pizza and go to this one. We're going to pretend this is a square pizza. Have you ever had a square pizza? Pretty crazy. I'm going to do the same thing here that we did over here. That means the piece closest to the middle is going to be colored in black. See that? Skip this one. Color this one. 
It looks a little confusing, so just really pay attention so you don't make a mistake like I did. But if you do, it's okay. There's ways to fix it. Even if you have to start over, it's okay. This is a design that might be easier to watch before you try it. Okay, on this piece I have black, white, black, white, and there's this little corner up here that needs to be black as well. There's not gonna be the same exact number of black and white sections on each piece, and that's okay. That's completely okay. All right, I colored these, not these, these, not these. We're gonna to go to this corner over here, starting with the piece closest to the middle. Color it in. If you have a different number of lines on each of your sections, that's okay, not to worry. Skip and then color. When a little friend of mine made one of these in one of her art classes, they did it on a huge art pad. And it took them two different lessons to complete it. They met by Zoom class when school was not able to meet in person. How many of you have done Zoom classes? Yeah, it's a pretty popular thing to do. I'm gonna add just a little tiny bit in this corner right here to kind of give it the impression of being curved. You see that? All right, what's next? I colored these, not these. Colored these, not these. Colored these, not these. This corner. Start closest to the middle. Fill it in. There we go. Skip a piece. Oop, I just got paint on me. It wasn't quite dry. I'm gonna have to turn this around because the paint is wet. Don't be confused by that. I haven't changed anything except for the direction. When you're working on an art piece, whether you're coloring, whether you're using markers or painting, it's okay to move whatever you're painting on around to make it more comfortable for your hand. I just didn't wanna make you too dizzy by moving it too much. Can you still see it? Is it still on the screen, Annie? Yeah. Okay, very good. It's not hanging off the edge of the viewer. Nope, good. Very good. All right. Hmm? Okay. There we go. Just keep on coloring. Sometimes when you're coloring in with a marker, you'll see some little white spots left over. You wanna to try to go back and color those in pretty carefully, all right? One more section to go in this way. Okay, this one is colored, not this one. This funny little one needs to be colored. Start in the middle, going out towards me. Skip one and color one. If you are following along and doing this while you're watching, when you get to this point, you are halfway there, a little bit more than halfway, because you've done every other section. Well, does it look like this? Nope, still not done. The magical part happens in a little while. Next, we need to do the sections that are in between where we have not colored anything. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because we're going to start not with the one closest to the middle, but the next one. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna skip the section closest to the middle and I'm gonna color in the second section instead of the first one from the middle. Does that make sense to anybody? There we go. And skip the next one and come out here and color this one. I'm calling it coloring, markering it, whatever you want to call it, filling it in. There we go. Do you see that? 
So instead of coloring the one closest to the center, I skipped that one. Color, skip, color. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around for myself so that I don't make a mistake. Skip the one in the middle, color this one. There we go. Skip one, color one. Are you getting dizzy yet? I'm turning it. Do you like to turn your artwork while you're working or do you like to keep it in one place? I recently got a table easel to put some of my canvas work up on while I'm painting them, but I'm having to try to get used to that because when it's up on an easel, you can't turn it. So that's something new for me. I think I just like having it on the table in front of me a little bit better, but for teaching classes, I think people can see it much better if it's up on an easel, especially when we're doing in-person classes or in-person part paint parties, which are starting up soon. So moms, dads, aunties that might be watching this at some point, it's not just for kids. We're having our first in-person paint party, the Pineapple Palooza. Our host is Strings Plus Things Boutique right here in Somerville on August the 8th. You can get all the details. Just look for the uh, flyer on the Facebook page. Shoot me any questions you have in an email or a text or give me a call. I'll be glad to fill you in. Okay. So we've colored this one and this one. Now it's time to do this one. Do I start with the section closest to the middle? No, we need to skip that one, right? Gotta come over to this one. That Pineapple Palooza, by the way, is a big 24 inch wooden door hanger. I think the wood is maybe 22 inches, but then once we put the hanger and the big bow on it, it'll be about 24 inches. It'll look awesome on your front door. Or you could put it on a wall or in your kitchen, a back porch or a deck would be a fun place for it. Any place you want it to be be a great little gift to give somebody. We have some personaliz personalizations available to go with it if you'd like your monogram or an initial on it or a special word, hello or welcome, happy summer, whatever you like. There we go. See there? Starting to get close. We have one more section to go. Ooh, is your hand getting tired? I hope not. It just kind of depends on how big you made your design. It's a lot of places to color in. But Miss Kathy or Nana, it still does not look 3D, does it? That's where the magic comes in. And we're not quite ready for that yet. This is the last section. Could you get me? No, I don't. This is the last section to color in on mine with the black marker. Then I'll be ready for some shading. That's the part that brings it to life or makes it look 3D. Ta-da! Let me turn it back around here so you can see. Tilt it up if that helps. It looks kind of funky. Yes, it does. Kind of funky. All right, I'm done with my black marker. If you're still working on it, do not worry. Not a problem. The next step, the next step you can do with a pencil or you can do it with a black colored pencil. I think a regular pencil lead works better for this. I personally love to use mechanical pencils and they are not the best for shading. So I have a graphite pencil, which is just a plain pencil, an art pencil that has lead in it that um, it's soft lead, the color of a regular pencil. Okay. Now, if you go, if you remember when we first started this design, one of the first thing we did was draw how many lines? 10, that's right. 
Can you kind of still see where those lines are? Can you remember where they were in between each section? What you're gonna do is you're gonna add some shading on each section. So if I were to cover the, the all this up and just have one piece that kind of looks like a piece of pizza showing, can you all see that? One piece showing, I need to shade along the inside edges of both of those sides of my pizza. Let me show you what I mean. Starting in the middle, I'm gonna just take my pencil and color a little section. Now, in the black, it's certainly not gonna show. So we're only gonna do that on the white on both sides. Can you see that? Let me hold it up. It's just a very small section and it's a little bit dark. The way you make it look 3D is by starting dark on the outer edge and then getting lighter as we move towards the middle. So I'm gonna take my pencil and continue shading, but just a little tiny bit, much lighter as we get closer. I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna rub that to kind of blend it in. There we go. Get it go to back to the edge and do it dark again and rub it in. You really want to try to blend that shading from dark, darkest at the outside edge to lighter, closer to the middle. This might be something that you've never done before. It's a little bit hard. If you did our other 3D art, our emoji face, we did this around the circle. Okay, we did this one piece of the pizza or a piece of the puzzle, whatever you want to call this crazy design. We're going to move to the next one. If you put your hands on your artwork to cover it up, you'll see one section. Again, we're going to take our pencil and we're going to shade along the edges on both sides. This time I'll be up here because that's where the white is. And down here. On both sides of this slice of pizza. Ha -ha. And getting a little bit lighter towards the middle, but don't go all the way to the middle. Just a little ways like that. Take my finger and just rub over it a little bit to blend it. If yours doesn't look like it's blending a whole lot, that's okay. That is okay. Annie, can you go get me a Q-tip? A couple of Q-tips? Okay, there's a little shading on that one. Time to move to the next slice of pizza. How many slices of pizza, well, imaginary pizza, are on my design? There's 10, that's right. I'm on number three, so I've got a little ways to go. I promise you though, take your time here doing this step because this is really gonna make your 3D stand out darkest at the edge and a little bit lighter towards the middle. Now on this one, the line did not keep going, so there is nowhere to shade on this side, and that's okay. Just kind of rub across the ones that are there. Blends it in a little bit. A good way to blend this is with a Q-tip, and I forgot about that until just now. So I have a little helper here who's hopefully gonna go get one for me in just a minute or two and I'll show you how that works. If you have a Q-tip at your house, it might work. There's a special art tool made for shading as well. It's a like tightly rolled up cone shape of paper. And somewhere around here, there's some of those too. Just not sure where. If you don't feel like it's showing up real good, you can go back and add a little bit more, kind of layering it. Oh, what do you see? Does it look different on this side from maybe over here? Can you see the difference? Do you see a little bit of that roundness to the little shape? You know, I was calling them slices of pizza. Once you put the shading, it starts to look like a cone. What's a cone? Think of an ice cream cone, the kind that has the point all the way at the, at the bottom. And you might start to see some ice cream cones the, tip, the bottom of the cone would be right here in the middle, and if you had ice cream in it, the ice cream would be up here on the outside. Okay, time for this one. 
Here we go, shade both sides. Dark along the outside of the cone or the slice of pizza and a little bit lighter towards the middle. Just go over it very lightly back and forth with your pencil to blend it. Blending is something that adds a lot to your art, so it's a good thing to practice. Moving right along to my next one. We're gonna keep going all the way around this whole design, both sides of each section, each slice of pizza, if you're looking at it like that, or each cone if you're starting to see the cone shape. Each one has shading on both sides. I like to shade it and then rub it and then go back and add another layer of shading. It seems to show up a little bit better. Play around with it, see what works for you. You will get pencil on your finger, but that's okay. That won't hurt anything. It'll wash right off. All right, I'm getting there. Need to do this end. Thank you. My helper just brought me a Q-tip. We're gonna try that in a minute here. Let's see if we feel like that makes a difference. Just a simple Q-tip that you might wipe your ears out with after a bath. Yeah, that works really good. Look at that. I just made little circular motions. The Q-tip really smooths it out. So I'm going to go back real quick and just run my Q-tip over some of these sections. You see how that smooths it out? My art journal notebook has mixed media paper in it. And that means it's kind of thick paper that has some little bit of texture on it so that you can paint on it or use marker on it and it won't bleed through to the other side. If we turn it, you can barely see the design coming through. And that's why when I just use the pencil, it looks a little bit bumpy, but when I smooth it out, you can see it a little better. You see that? Starting to see that. I think that shading might show up better on the camera once I use the Q-tip. All righty. Thank you all for taking time to stop by today or whatever day you do. Please like and share the page. Feel free to share this little project with your friends and family. I'd love to see your finished masterpieces, so don't forget to send them in. You could win a free art kit. If you're not familiar with our art kits, there's a post about those. There's, I think, 10 designs available this week. And if you have a special request, just let me know. I just have a couple more sections left. Dark pencil shading at the outside of this section and a little bit lighter going towards the middle. A tiny little space right there, but it's important to try to do each one. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Are you starting to see that these are looking like cones that are round? Is the 3D effect starting to show on yours? I think it shows up better in person than on the camera. Dark line on the outside, a little bit lighter towards the middle. Every little section, I know it takes a few minutes to do this. If you're not sure yours is working, just keep working on it. There's one more step at the end that adds that final pop of 3D. We'll get to that pretty soon. I have one more section, how about you? If you haven't caught up to that, that's okay. Take your time. Even if you don't finish when I'm done, you can always finish it later. You can go back and rewatch this if you need some help. 
If you get stuck or have any questions, just put them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. Does anyone here have a favorite kind of art? Play-Doh, slime, paint, crayons, marker? What do you like to make art with? How about recycled art? Who knows what that is? Making art out of things that have already been used for something else. That's one of my favorite things to do. I have a lot of favorite art things though. Making something with basically something that materials that would probably go in the trash if you didn't use them is really fun. Okay, I'm going to go around one more time and just kind of make sure that I try and highlight or um, blend each one of these. Over in this corner, I'm not real happy with the way that looks, so I'm going to just color in a tiny, tiny little bit of the corner. Just a tiny bit. All right. Let's see if we can hold this up. Maybe you can see it. Are you seeing the cone shapes? Like I said, there's one more step to make it real 3D. The very last thing you're gonna do when you're ready is you're gonna use a white colored pencil. If you don't have a white colored pencil, you could use a white crayon. How many of you have crayons and you love all the different colors, but you almost never use white because it usually doesn't show up on the paper you're working on. Today, we're gonna to use that white pencil and it's gonna um, make a big difference. All right, go back to the very middle of your page. There's 10 cones or 10 pieces of pizza or 10 sections, whatever you wanna call them. You're going to make a line in the middle of each section. We did our pencil shading on the outside edges of each section, but now we're gonna make a line from the very middle straight down the middle of the cone. And you're gonna to have to go over it a couple times for it to show up. It's not gonna be super dark, but it is gonna show up. You want that line to be skinny when it starts in the middle and then when you get to the sections that are closer to the outside, you wanna make them a little, little bit wider. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me hold it up. Can you see the white line right here? Annie, can you see it? The white line? Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, I'm gonna to move to this section. I'm gonna go back to the middle. I'm gonna draw a white line, kinda of go back and forth over it. You can go through the white section, even though it doesn't really show up, it'll help you to make a straight line. And on this black section, I'm gonna make sure I go back and forth to thicken it up a little bit. There we go. A Little bit thicker. All right. Moving to the next section from the center out towards the edge. Now remember how I said this one only had shading on one side and not on the other because it kind of runs off the paper? My white line looks like it comes to the end of the cone, but it's really still the middle because if this cone kept going, it would go way out here. Does that make sense? All right, I'm gonna thicken up the white line at the outside edge and just a little bit at the inside part. Next section from the middle to the outside make a white line go back and forth you gotta press pretty hard with this pretty hard to make it show up and it's not going to be super white looking that's okay are you starting to see that that white line helps to make your design look 3d what does 3d mean anyway it means that it doesn't look flat anymore it looks like there are curves. You know and I know that this is just a flat piece of paper that we've drawn on, but when we're finished and someone looks at it, they'll think, wow, how did you do that? Pretty cool. All righty, continuing my little white lines from the middle of the paper, right down the middle of each cone, all the way to the outside edge. Go over it a few times and 
thicken that line out here. A little thinner here, a little thicker there. Just have a couple more sections to do. Andy, would you see if there's another white one over there? The point on this one is really low. Colored pencils, I love coloring with them, but getting them to sharpen, go, just go me another one first. Yes, there is, in another drawer. In the drawer below, the bottom drawer. Yeah, there's probably one in here. Sorry guys, we have a lot of art supplies around here. Let's switch to another one. Oh yeah, that one works much better. Wow, that one's a lot brighter for some reason. I'm gonna have to go back. Sometimes that happens, you're using something and you're not sure if it's the best and you go and try another one and it works better. Look at that, much brighter. Has that ever happened to you? Maybe with a crayon? Maybe you want a blue crayon and you try and it's not quite the right blue and you grab in the box and find another blue one that you like a lot better? Well, that just happened to me with a white colored pencil. Who would know? Just going back over it a little bit to make it show up. Whoops, I missed one section here. The very last one. There we go. Ta-da! I now have white lines from the middle to the outside of every one of my little cone shapes. And when you look, you will be amazed that it looks like it's rounded cones right there on my paper. Well, that's it for today. If you're not finished yet, no worries. You finish it whenever you can. I'd love to see your finished projects. So don't forget to drop a, drop a picture down in the comments. Let me know who did it so that I can put your name in the drawing. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you stay cool, stay safe, stay well, and be blessed. Bye-bye till next time.